people deluded i'm back again thank you for having me and thank you for tuning back in now i've tried to stay away from this um topic if you don't know what i'm on about arsenal allegedly have 45 million pounds to spend in the summer now i've tried to stay away from it for obvious reasons i don't want to be talking about negativity i don't actually know how much the club have in the war chest i know one minute we have a war chest one minute there's no money for transfers um one minute it's ffp i'm not a finance man i know you've all seen the videos that can inform you upon that sort of subject more so than i ever will be so we don't need to get on that just simply to hear 45 million i do think it'll be a bit more and my, my and i say that with my my hands crossed and stuff is a bit sad and really and truly on one hand i can't really have sympathy for una and in the sense that he he must have known he must have been briefed on things like this um yes he could be double crossed yes people can go back on challenge on on promises and things but when he stepped into the club he knew he must have known the context and the constrictions that he'd be having to work with whether that's no money to sign players whether having to be smart around what players he brings in whether that's having to improve um existing players whether that's by choice or by force because you can't bring in money so really i don't really have that i do have sympathy but how much sympathy can i have when you look at it all sides but on the other side, how can you really expect the man to fix the team? Yes, um, re there's two ways of going about this. You either scout players or you don't. A lot of people sit here and say, and I've said in my comments and said on Twitter, and again, I don't engage in everything, but people, I, I implore you to think logically, people. Yeah, think logically. Let's just look at the centre-half thing. We're going off topic for a bit, but look at the centre-half comments, yeah? What was you hearing? There's no one available. We, we can't sign people from rivals. There's no one available. On one hand, people, of course, I get it. I'm not, you can't just sign anyone for a top-six club. You need to be assured of it. But on the other hand, I say this. Scouts do your job. We have scouts. Well, Missling Tat's leaving. We'll get on to Missling Tat. But there's scouts across all leagues, across all nations, that are tasked to find centre-halves. Why I am not prepared to accept that lazy excuse is even if you look before the summer. Before last summer, we was trying to sign a centre-half in that January. We even signed Mavropanos, forgive me if I'm wrong. We was trying to bring in another one. That same summer, we brought in Socrates. We was trying to get in another centre-half and we had a failed attempt for Vida. So the club know we have an active look for a centre-half. So if we think logically, if you're a scout, if you're a club or whatever, you're sitting there with your manager, whoever is in the room at this moment in time, you've drawn up a list. We need centre This is how football works. You need a centre-half. To which Miss Lintat, whoever, whoever uh, must have had a bunch of targets in mind, centre half targets in mind, whether d different profiles, young and old sort of thing. We know we need someone in there, prime, ideally people, but you get the point. There has to have been a dossier of reports from last summer or the build up to last summer reviewing centre halves. If we know, if we went and got Socrates, I right, call cool, Miss Lintat, the Dortmund stuff, um, we might not have needed to run the rule over him, but you can imagine they must have known way before we as fans knew we were in for Socrates what the plans were. To go and sign Vida, this means they've spent the last year or so more more than that because they would anyways assessing players seeing which players are levels are you telling me this doc that document of dossiers of players like what we do people just saying who we should sign has gone missing there has to be a, a plan or a name of targets on a piece of paper somewhere of center halves that were eyeing up if we can't afford them and bring them in or persuade them that's that's fair that's for another day but for me personally to sit here and say no um to they, they, no, who would we sign or there's or these things there it's lazy because these clubs do scout these clubs i know i'm saying missing tap but Uno and race someone I'm not I'm not pinning the blame at anyone's feet I'm just saying someone has to have had a list a doc a dossier of potential targets think logically people you're going into the summer they they tried to get Vida let's just assume Vida and Socrates was the center half targets there has to have been a thing where you had Vida you had Socrates you had XYZ contingency plans in case you can't sign a, um, a and B and things like that so by that logic there has to be a piece of paper or a bunch of targets between them so I can't understand I will not accept that one again it's difficult to bring people in in january we know but it's 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 sad so we're in a tough situation we're in a tough situation but back to this to only have 45 million it can't how what can you expect to an to do if we look at the terraria deal it works out as we're paying more but less in installments over time so we will probably showing our hand from last season that we're broke and obviously Socrates is a decent centre half and he's been good for us but if we're honest it is an underwhelming signing it was a cut price sort of deal sort of thing he wanted to leave and he had only a year left or so on his deal you look at Lick Steiner again away from his ability you see someone with experience someone that could be the number two to Bellerin so these were I wouldn't say underwhelming signings but these were sort of cut price signings on the backdrop against what people were spending we're never going to be able to spend what the top six have and we shouldn't need to we've 
we've been here many a time. Scouting players, on one hand, I know what I've said, but identifying talent, we've been here and said we try for many to players isn't the issue with Arsenal, it's getting, it's getting things done. If you want to be self-disdaining, then you have to do sensible things. You need to sign players that can take you up a level, that you can bring in more endorsements because you're more competitive, and you need to be smarter with the signings. Now, if we knew we only had 45 million, Aaron Ramsey should have been sold in January. We know we need him for the squad, but he should, be, he should have been sold in January the latest. We know last summer to raise funds. Alexis Sanchez, no disrespect to Mkhitaryan, but if you let Alexis Sanchez go to Manchester City for anything from 40 to 60 million, however much they bidded for him, we would not be in a thing where Mkhitaryan is on 10 million, Ozil is on his thing, and Ramsey can't sign a new deal, and we can't bring in players on a permanent basis because of this. So if we're self-disdaining, they need to make the right choices. 45 million, you can't expect fireworks. Like I said... You know, he must have known the constraints he was walking into and to a degree, I think he actually relished it because you're going from a club on, where you're kind of under severe scrutiny at PSG. Everything's questioned. To our Arsenal, you can only say get away with things, but it's a, it's a complete 360, people. It's a rebuilding job. People that want to win champs. I, I, apart from Rafa Benitez when he went from Madrid to Newcastle, he's made such a dramatic change in a season. Do you get what I'm saying, people? So he must have known the constraints he's working in. So on one hand, he can't complain. But on the other hand, what can a manager do? Don't get it twisted again on the topic of him needing to work with what he has. Mustafi and these man there, Mustafi's a lost cause, people. But for me personally, I would have liked to have seen a better improvement in our proactive approach to defending. I'm not expecting us to be able to defend to a great standard because we ain't got the quality. But what I'm talking is that off the ball mainly there's a proactive approach okay Koscielny's had to pull over because Aguero's there Monreal let me drop in and, and cover the space Te Terreira let me drop in we're not proactive enough and regardless of personnel and stuff that that particular thing comes down to the coaching because you're, you can't say he needs his own he does need his own players but you can't sit here and say them lazy excuses but praise how quickly he's able to implement the counter attacking the set pieces the playing out from the back you can't you, you can't. But on the other hand, what can he do? We know money makes the difference. We're clearly not scouting players and or, or using the scouting sort of method and signing unknowns properly. So we need to go against, I wouldn't say more known targets, but more conventional targets that maybe not under the radar sort of thing. That comes money. Now, how are we going to afford that with 45 million? Now, there's an option to buy on Dennis Suarez's deal. Let's just say that, you know, Emre con concedes that, OK, I want to keep him permanently. What what is that? That's anything from what eighteen to twenty million. So that's twenty five. That's twenty five million left already in the kitty. Um. So what can he do? He's not going to be able to bring a centre half with that. He's not going to be able to bring in a R R Ramsey replacement with that. Um. Dennis Suarez would be the winger, but he's not going to bring in a winger with that. He's probably going to have to bread in Reese Nelson and that. Um. So I can't see what he does even with selling players. How can he really bring in peas really and truly? Like you look at it. Obviously, Welbs. Um. Probably Welbeck and Czech are going to be free agents, so that frees up some wages. Um, Lick Steiner, he might very well get a new deal, but if we're honest, he shouldn't, so that would free up some wages as well. Aaron Ramsey's obviously departing the club, so wages are going to be freed up, so we can get away with certain things. Oh, it looks like Ozil looks to be on his way out. That would be wages freed up. El Nene could go on a cut price, and Mustafi hasn't been linked with a move away, but if we're honest, this should be his last season at the club, unless a dramatic turnaround in his application and his performances come. So they would free up wages. Ages, but you're you're thinking of it is that Ozil obviously even if even if a club did want Ozil how you how much can you sell him for we're not going to get anywhere near the forty million and that's not because of his ability it's his wages and his form his form's indifferent um, so you're going to have to make it attractive to another buyer because think about people if you was another club and you wanted Ozil you would have to consider that while he's a good player he's not in the certain sort of form thing that he's previously in and not to mention you're going to have to take on them three hundred k a week wages unless. Arsenal want to subsidise them, which I don't think would be the case, to which you're going to have to say to Arsenal, Look, yo, listen, you've got to give us him for the cheap because we've got to save money some way. You've got to make it attractive to us. So Ozil, what, for me in my head, that's, that's 15, 20 million, if, if that, and that's nothing really and truly. Mustafi would probably be hard to move on because of wages, so we might have to use him in, a, in I don't know, a swap deal or something. El Nene's had interest, he's rejected it. So there's some tough decisions to make, but at the same time, we know we need dramatic changes, but at the same time, I actually don't feel it would be the wise of things to make wholesale changes like i mean widespread wholesale changes i think it's got to be a gradual thing um so for instance i know i i think kashoni can't contribute to this club anymore and i probably should be moved on but by the same token someone like that in my opinion him or Monreal, for instance, off the top of my head, should be kept within the squad. I know there's not, you can say there's not really any leaders and things like that. I feel they should be kept at least until 2020 of sorts. Don't get twisted. I'm still open to um, Koscielny being moved on, but you get the point. Um, 
It is su it sucks, people, because this isn't what you want to hear from a club that's for the last two, maybe even three years now, um, this including this year, has been out of the Champions League and doesn't look anywhere near to getting it. So it's almost like you know Embry has an impossible task and he's expected to perform miracles. And what's even more daunting, and it's not even on you know Embry's thoughts, is when you consider the sort of profile he has and what he's achieved to what the club currently is. And what I mean by that is terrific Europa League in the Europa League and stuff. But if you look at his league finishes under Seville, they're not the best, in it? Um, if we was to win the Europa League a couple of times, we're in the Champions League. So while it might not be there in the league position, we're there in it. So if there's someone that can can do that, you can see how this would appeal to the this would appeal to the board and things. Nothing to do with Emery. You can see how he would he would appeal to the board. Also, obviously, we know he's worked under Monkey and Monchi, sorry, and all of these sort of things. So he's he, he's more of an attractive proposition to them. So you know, Emery, I wouldn't say he he's there's no way you can blame Emery for having only forty five million. But on the same hand, he knew. What what the role he was coming into you can't really have any sympathy to a degree but by the same token it sucks because if you're a manager how do you fix this because you i just said you have to make wholesale changes but you can't make too many it's going to be tricky moving on players anyways we know we regardless of even if we talk about departures people need to come in you can't do it for 45 million because like i said dennis suarez let's not get specific i think his option is 18 million but let's just say it's 20 now just to simplify things it's 20 obviously we've got 45 so that's 25 already how but what are you supposed to do with that like you can't we couldn't even say with that money you can't even go and get um um what, what would the right term be you can't get let's say top 10 or just below premier league talents because i know again regardless of his opinions but if you would think that um, possibly Yang Bissaka, Madison Brooks. Um, who else is there? Maguire, off the top of my head, Chilwell. Uh, all of these sort of players, which you which Liverpool has served Liverpool well. When you look at Robertson and that, football's gone mad now. They're all gonna cost a pretty penny, so you can't even do a thing like that. Which the only thing I can gonna say again, if we've only got forty five million, is that scouts have to do their job. Unai Emery's a Spanish man and a La Liga man. I just hope he's got some La Liga talents in mind or some lesser knowns. I hope I know Mislin Tat's dipping very soon actually because we're in February now. I hope he's got some targets that he's been eyeing up because they're the only way. That's the only way we're gonna do this now. When I see forty five million, I can only the only way I can see it is that. We we have to blood the likes of Reese Nelson and possibly Emil Rose Smith next season if they're not going to go out on loan into the team to occupy the flanks and stuff, as well as assuming Dennis Suarez is made a, as as a permanent. So that would be the or it might not be the the choices I would want on the flanks, but it's changed that that would be for me anyways. What I'd think is would be them addressing the need for a winger. Of course, I'd hope to be wrong, and a more marquee signing came in and Nelson and them man are given chances. But yeah, central mid. Scouts are probably gonna have to do their job and find a lesser known profile centre half and possibly centre mid because there's no way of, there's no way forty five million in today's market is gonna get you anything really and truly it's not it's not it's not now like I said Ozil Mustafi who is gonna give us thirty five million for Mustafi you're gonna have to use him either possibly in a swap deal to a uh, to for for a player or again similar to Ozil fifteen maybe no I don't think I don't even pay twenty for for Mustafi um it's fifteen maybe even ten point seven five because the forms he's been in. Like really and truly does what top six teams top below the top six which real teams does he get into? Obviously he can play for teams and away from being harsh on the lad, but what does he really do? To be honest with you, and it is con it is concerning. We're getting ourselves in a difficult position, especially with wages, because we've got players on high wages. Ramsey's had to go as a, as a result of the high wages, whether you believe in him or not. Personally, I feel Torreira, Guendouzi, and these sort of guys, their their deals are gonna need to be renewed soon, just on the basis of strengthening our market position. If these players will go, because let's be honest, um, nineteen year old Guendouzi, twenty two year old Torreira, they are to some terrific talents. I want them to stay at Arsenal for life, but it's been a while since we've had players that I genuinely believe could play for the top three clubs in the world. And obviously, uh, Guendouzi's not ready for that, but one day he might be. Sought after interest from Madrid and Barca and all of these teams. And admittedly, Barcelona are set for life in midfield right now. But you see the point in it. Torreira, for me, I, I've told you, look, I don't think he's here long, man. We have to enjoy him because I think that guy's elite. But to keep these lot, we have to sign new deals. I know a lot is made of Liverpool obviously spending mad money on Alisson and mad money on Van Dijk. But equally, which they've seen as smart. They're always renewing people's contracts. They're, again, I'm just naming names at this point, but Firmino, Mane, Salah, these men are being tied down to that. If they ever want to leave the club, they're in a strong negotiating position. And that's what football's about now, because I do think it's true what Wenger's saying, that people are going to leave on free deals now more, more often than not, and you are seeing it. So they tie down their investments. They tie down the young ones like Trent Arnold. New deal every week. What is it, till 2024 now? 
there's no reason for these players to ever leave Liverpool at this moment in time. But if they ever did or the club wanted to change their mind on them, you see the negotiating hand they have. Now compare that to Arsenal. It's silly. It's suicide. We have, we've played a dangerous game. You need like one thing I took from Raul Sanye's message when he spoke to the um, club and I liked about him when he when he gave his little press conference thing. He said within the next last two years of someone's contract, you need to know your plans for them. And it is true. We've got some players literally in their last two years, so we're going to need to know what we can do. We know it's a, we know we, no one is going to be happy with any decision the club or Unai Emery make. This is a season where what's the saying? Have to ruffle a few feathers or break a few eggshells or whatever's going to have to happen, but. It's sad, man. Unless the club get on one page and can can um, assess talents, get talents into the club, um, which you know Emery has identified areas he needs, I can't see it happening. Like I really can't see us doing any bits in terms of the, the landscape because we're getting against it too much. I know we got Torreira, but for every Lucas Torreira, we've missed out on Kante. We've missed out on several talents um, because of the penny pinching and several other things in the club and or not being able to offer more competitive wages or more competitive sport project than other other teams. And that is true. That, like You need to be able to do that. Like I said, for every Torreira that we missed out, that we get, we've missed out on many. For every Torreira that we've been able to do the little structured payment things, we've missed out on many. And yeah, we can win Torreira and we can scout as much as we want, but when these clubs are just coming and blowing you out of the water, how much can you do? I, I'm sure I speak for most Arsenal fans when I say no Arsenal fan is calling for us to... Obviously, we'd love it, but not a £500 million summer. You would just like a young... Maybe 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 a hundred to two hundred mil 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 one fifty or something like that. Just to and I'm not saying to splash it all. We just I can't speak for everyone, but I would just like okay, cool. There's a centre half. Go out and go, no, not cooler, not cooler. Obviously, you can't sign cooler barley, but go out and get the cooler barley's. Go out and get. Obviously, he's dramatically not on his level, but Diallo or 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 players like of that nature, you get what I'm saying. Go and get the central midfielders. Go and get the wingers that can take us onto qualities. Ironically, it must be a bit like how Spurs fans feel. I know Spurs fans, they 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 must be vexed because they're third. They're creeping up on City. They've been up there for the last couple of years. They just need a couple more signings or or one at a push, two at a push, two marquee ones to assist the fight with. I know I keep saying, and a lot of people say Deli Ali and Kane, but we know it's Deli Ali, Eriksen. Kane, Son, assist these sort of players, and we're being sold short, man. And like I said, man, Unai Emery is gonna have to just. It's sad, but as deep as he is, he's gonna have to work. With, he knows what he stepped into. He's gonna have to work with what he has, and we we can't expect anything. We you can't expect him to get top four, in my opinion. Of course, I'd love a miracle to happen. Of course, mathematically, it's still possible. Of course, I do think we could have been closer to the top four with some of the points we've dropped. But you can't expect him to do anything seriously when he's got this playing squad, when he's got 45 million and things like that. Um, whether it's through FFP or not being able to give finances, we don't have the cash. There's no way around it. So he's going to have to perform a miracle. And I think fans are going to need to get rid of their expectations. Like Arsenal fans, obviously the last two, three years we've been shooken up. But top four was a luxury. Top four was a given. We might not have done anything serious in the in 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 the in the competition, but it was a given. Now it's a now it's for us. It's a it's a dream. It's a pipe dream to get top four. It's a pipe dream to compete for major trophies. We're essentially a top six cup side now. Um, we we will probably fight for Europa League, and if it happens, it happens. Um, we didn't, in my opinion, we didn't put up a good enough fight in the Cat Yarabel and in the FA Cup. But that's essentially what we are now, in my opinion. It's a cup side thing. So like, it would be unfair to. And again, you know, again, I keep saying Unai Emery has to work with what he has because we can't escape that fact. He, I wouldn't say he's got, no, he is blameless in this. He's not saying only forty five million, but he stepped into a job where he's bound to have known certain things. So I can't really have so, too much sympathy, but at the same time, I do because what can he do? What can he do? I don't necessarily think we're training enough in regards to being proactive defensively, and it's shown with our shape on the pitch. Like we're. we're statistically worse defensively at this moment in time which people were really up there to say when we was getting away wins and and clean sheets people were ready but how can he improve these like even if Unai Emery was to say okay cool I've made let's just say this he's like all right cool I've I've, be, I've believed in the likes of Mustafi and Xhaka all right cool I don't believe in them no more how he can't bring in a replacement and it's sad because again I, I like Jack I like Xhaka he's a bit hot and cold but you can't sell him for peas like, part of me wants to send him back to Gladbach and bring Costance here you can't do that Mustafi's not going to bring in no peas um yeah, like, we're at this stage. I mean, if you really... I can't understand what the club do because we claim to be self-sufficient and there's been numerous players we could have sold or kept at the club and sold for profit. Like, you look at the peanuts we get on young players like Gnabry, Benassia as well. Obviously, we're getting a nice little healthy 
chunk when Benassir is sold to the likes of Napoli or Roma, but you get the point. Rene Adelaide sold for peanuts. Of course, he might not be that 10 goals, 10 assists um, sort of player, but um, if that's Chelsea, Chelsea are tying down these players and they're getting them 18 millions and these things like that with buy buy back clauses and sell on clauses. That's we need to take it. In my opinion, we should take a leaf out of Chelsea's book because I know people get onto them for the loan army, for the young players not progressing, and a lot of that's true. But they're getting top dollar. Not let me not gas, of course, not top dollar, but they're getting profit on their players. And for Arsenal, that would do a lot for us if we claim to be self sufficient. Obviously, football is not just as white and black as that, but I'm not a finance man, I'm not an accountant, um, so I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just here to talk about footy and. Yeah, man, I'm, it is what it is now, man. There's no point being vexed because it is what it is, man. It is it is what it is. You just have to pray to God one day. You wake up, you go on Sky Sports, you see Yellow Bar and you see that Stan Kroenke is part of my language. Fucked off, really and truly. Like, it's... Until then, and it's not even just him. Like, in fact, it is just it is just him. We know board level and in and around it, there's question marks or have been question marks um, since people have left. But ultimately, it stands, it, it sits beneath the um the beneath the feet of the shepherd it is is Stan Kroenke you're seeing his team in certain finals and our team here clearly isn't if you just care about business you're a businessman if you just want to make business out of Arsenal then fair enough it hurts my soul but I can't be vexed if he's always been a businessman he cares about American football he actively cares about American football you see him there at American football if we're not in the FA Cup when are we here forgive me if I'm wrong but when have you seen Stan Kroenke or his son or anyone at the Emirates this season. You haven't. Win, lose or draw. You ain't seen them at the Emirates. You ain't seen them away. When when you look at Arsenal, when you look at other clubs, you can see people that stand... Like, even when you see things like you see Woodward and, and stuff at United, there's people you can kind of... Obviously, we'll never know what they do, but you can kind of attribute certain things to. At Arsenal, one benefit of Glazidis and Wenger going is that, obviously, they were both wrong in many incidences, but there's no one to hide. And I'm not seeing any direction. I'm not seeing any bravery. I'm not seeing anything. And it's that's not only no Emery. That's his is the sporting. His is the sporting things. It's down for the club to come out and tell the fans what's what. That's actually one thing I like about you know Emery. One thing because he's not selling. He don't sell dreams. He comes out and says there's no money. I can't do this. We hope to bring in this sort of thing, man. But I have sympathy for him, man. There's, like what can you expect a man to do? Forty five million in today's market, really and truly. Even if we did scout and sign players and. And, and and things like that. How much really can you can you do? Because as much as I'm saying if we could cut costs probably scouting a competent centre half and maybe a central midfielder, there's no way around it. You gotta go big for the winger. You gotta go big for the winger. Again, you can scout a winger with potential and stuff like that. And if that's the case, that's the case. But you've got to go big for a winger. Pepe would probably be not even the whole budget is getting someone like Nicolas Pepe. But if you even if you was to look at a uh, He's clearly rated, but he's probably not at Saar's level. In, um, I mean, he's not at Pepe's level in Saar, um, Ismail Saar that plays for Rennes. That's a 20, 25 million. So if we was to sign Denis Suarez permanently and sign Saar permanently, you'd have two wingers, essentially. But you wouldn't have no centre-halves, no, no central midfielders. So we're in a tough decision, man. Now, oh, it's, 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 I don't know if all of this is going to take four windows and things like this. It's all fun and game saying you know, Emery needs four windows. But if he's going to get four windows where he's offered peanuts, what can you expect a man to do, really and truly? Because this would, what, be a second? Or are you going to call it windows in terms of the um the full season, to which it would be, obviously, technically come come start of next season, it would be his third or whatever. Because, um, obviously, he would have had January, the summer, and then, yeah, at least. Yeah, he would have had January, the summer, and, well, the summer before January and yeah you get it so free but it is what it is man i haven't got nothing more to add on that point people we just have to see what he's saying but i'd love to hear you lots of opinions if you've got any comments subscribe and do the rest dg